Okay, moving on in our uh, Vapor 3 renderer tutorial is the contour renderer, which, uh, as you imagine, just draws contour lines in your scene. So, once again, to start Vapor, I will uh, launch Vapor from my terminal, but uh, again, most users will be launching from a desktop icon or double-clicking on their desktop wherever they installed it. One thing you can do if you're launching from the terminal is uh, you can... Uh, type in your command to launch Vapor, but then type in the location of your data set. So I'm going to type in data worf. My data is in a Harvey directory, and I believe the file is called, called uh, harvey.nc. And then Vapor, if you're using VDC uh, data or CF compliant data, Vapor will just load it automatically. So now in my scene, I don't have to reload my data like I did before. I can, out, off the bat, just make a new uh, render. So I'll start with an image, enable it, zoom out, and let's go to my uh, region manipulator and stretch out my image so we have a better idea of where we are in the world. And then turn off my region manipulator, get that out of the way. I'm going to go to my appearance tab, and I'm just going to select blue marble and turn on the oceans and call that good. Okay, my, actually, you know what, let's, let's offset it by a height variable. Let's just do HGT right there. And we should see it drop down by a marginal value. Ah, you can barely see that, but it just tweaked it slightly. Okay, so onto the contour renderer. Click on new, double click contour. I don't know if you guys saw that. I might have gone too fast, but the contour renderer is the second one from the top. So I have my new contour renderer, and before I turn it on, I'm going to pick a variable. I think um, rain C is kind of interesting. I think it's rainfall accumulation under Hurricane Harvey. So this is it right here. Pick that, select my height variable, HGT. And by the way, Vapor is going to be much more responsive if you set your parameters before turning your renderer on. Right now, we haven't loaded any data. <clears throat> but as soon as we turn the renderer on, that's when Vapor is going to go to your file system and start pulling all these reams of data. So what we can do now is set some of the parameters and then turn it on later just to save time. I won't touch data fidelity. And um, here's my appearance tab. Let's, let's turn it on at this point. Okay, now what we notice here is that we have a contour renderer offset by height and an image renderer offset by height. And so they're kind of being drawn in the same plane. You can see our contours are actually being drawn underneath the image renderer. So if we want to have the contours on top of the image renderer, what we can do is we can go to the uh, image settings and go to geometry. And down here in our, uh, I guess, our, our transform uh, table, we can translate, go to the translation tab, and go maybe minus four. Let's throw our image renderer down four kilometers. Uh, let's go down maybe six kilometers. 6,000 meters, and we can see now that our contours are now being drawn on top of the image renderer. Good. I'll click on my contour renderer in the renderer table, and now I'm going to go to my appearance tab. This is what controls how many contours are drawn, their spacing, and um, where they are in, with respect to your data. Here's my histogram, histogram of uh, rain C, and each one of these markers shows where one of my contours is being drawn. Uh, they all are equally spaced. So if I click on this guy <clears throat> and drag him left, you can see the contours evolve in the rendering as I go further and further. What I can also do is use this contour properties tab and increase the count. So let's put that up to 20, maybe 30. Uh, we can go maybe 40, let's see. Okay, so now we have a ton of contours and some pretty coarse data. Uh, that's why these look so jagged. I'm hesitant to bump up the fidelity here just for sake of time, but if I crank this up to full reconstruction, we would see much smoother contours in lieu of these kind of jagged, uh, compressed uh, compressed uh, samples of, um, of the data. So I'll go back to appearance. Um, you can also control the minimum either through this slider or through this one. And you can see when your contours start exceeding the bounds of the data, you get this red indicator right here. So 
Um, it's kind of letting you know that your parameters are not quite valid. They still work, but they're not uh, quite sensical. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much a control and transfer function. You can control the opacity like normal. And uh, the color manipulator, I can double click there and swing from blue to red like normal. Um, like all the renderers, you can go to your geometry tab, constrain the region that you're drawing to. You know, what, I'm going to go back to my appearance tab and change the color palette because I think the blues are hard to see with the ocean background. So I'll click on my gearbox and I'll load a black body color map, and that it's a little little bit easier to see, I suppose. Okay, back to geometry. We can edit the region we're drawing to um, with the geometry manipulator. I'm not going to do any transforms on it. I'm not going to copy anything. Um, and real quick, I'll just show you guys the region manipulator. Turn that on over here in the top left. Click on region. Right-click the handlebar. And then I can um, kind of isolate my region of interest. And then lastly, I'll go to my annotation renderer. Turn on a color bar. And one thing I didn't do really earlier was give it a title. So this variable is rain C with, with two N's. Click enter, and there we have my little uh, logo. Bump up the font size a little bit. And then there we go. There's my annotation. All right. Um, I believe that's it for the contour renderer. One thing I didn't mention is that currently the contour renderer only supports 2D variables. So if you're looking for contours on a 3D variable, that's a feature that is in the works. We're not quite there yet. Okay. Uh, moving on to our next renderer.